Yeah. Red light? Yeah. Red light, yeah. We've been talking about this video yeah. for three, four yeah. years. I know, and we were going, we had plans to film it right before. Who, where do I, where do I look? Um, I think it's the main camera. <laughs> this one's the main camera, yeah. We we're gonna do it and then COVID happened. Yeah. So this is, this coming. is exciting. Modular synthesizers. Yes. This is a spaceship from like a sci-fi movie. Like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> look at this thing. It feels super fun. This is your instrument, yeah. What's a synth? I think a synth broadly is mm -hmm. any electronic music or just sound making device. If you're electronically producing a sound, that's a synth. It's a synth. So, and then this is like the <laughs> modular synth final boss. <laughs> is what you have here. <laughs> a modular synth just means that you have modules that make it up. That means that you can customize it. So yeah. not just the usual synth parameters mm -hmm. like pitch and uh, you know tone, but you also want to be able to have it randomize notes or you know, there's so many options. It's basically like, what would you want an electronic instrument to be able to do? You can probably find the right module yeah. for it and pair it with the other modules of the other options that you want to have in your synth. No, this yeah, you can have tiny ones. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, it could be a three module synth. It could be a, I don't know how many I have here. Yeah. Probably about a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> um, like here's one yeah, yeah, module. one module. You can buy all these different modules that do all these different things mm -hmm. and then patch them together. How could you possibly make sense of this? So the patch it's, cables yeah. is another big thing. So so for instance, the traditional yeah. synthesizer is an oscillator that makes a sound, yeah. like just a tone. And then you would patch another module, let's say that's uh, controlling the pitch. So you'd patch up the pitch to the oscillator. In a regular, like like this thing? Yeah, that has something controlling the pitch of the oscillator. But it's all, but it's all but it's it's behind the scenes. Module. Yeah, you don't get to change that connection because yeah. that's all mm -hmm. underneath the, the faceplate. Yeah, being a guitar player. This kind of reminds me of like a guitar pedal board. You plug in your guitar, this is where you're getting your main signal, and then you go to distortion, reverb, and yeah. then it goes out. And then this is your distortion, reverb, and your guitar pedals, but you can change the order of them. Yeah, so if you Module. think of a guitar pedal board, you yeah. can change the order of what your pedals totally. are in, and that changes the sound of the effects. With modular, not only are you doing it with audio, but you have what's called CV or control voltage. Yeah, okay, that's something yeah. that's way different here. Control voltage is just a signal that's either low or high or anywhere in between and it can be moving mm. at any rate. The best way to think of it is like invisible hands. This is what modular yeah. people say. So if you <laughs> yeah, have yeah. like, let's say you're, you're Should playing Should we start guitar, doing right? something? And so oh, that we yeah, can like, sure. yeah, show people. So one thing about pulling out chords when you're dealing with a huge synth is just try and get the same color and that just keeps them organized. And I imagine you color code them as These you're patching something in. These cables are color coded by length. So that's oh, just like, okay. if you know where you want to patch something, you yeah. can guess the length of chord you want. Unlike if you're building out a sound in an audio program, we're undoing your work here and you can't get oh, it yeah. back. No, like, yeah. This patch is gone. I, once I recorded it. it out and that's the only version of it that will ever exist. That seems to be something really cool about modular synth is that it is, you know, fully synthetic, but there's a realness to it, for lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah. And that like, it's a one-off thing that you created and there's no getting it back. I think that changes your mindset and yeah. your approach to it. I like how these two have these are called uh, Maybe, stack yeah. cables. If you want to like double up, send the same signal somewhere else, you can just plug it into that same mm -hmm. patch cable rather than finding like a yeah. splitter module. These can be used for an audio signal and CV. Yeah, audio is just a wave uh -huh. and CV is just a slow wave. Well, a CV could be any speed of wave, but when you're hearing a sound, it's just like the air vibrating super uh -huh. fast. When you're converting a real sound into a recording, all it's doing is changing that air vibration into a pattern of electricity. Yeah, it's just the same thing. It's just yeah. voltage going up and down on these. Yeah, exactly. The thing I was gonna say about the invisible hands is like, let's say you have a synth and you're making it go like, wow, 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 uh -huh. wow. And you want that wow, wow to happen. Instead of you having to turn the filter knob, wow, wow. You can just get mm -hmm. a wave that goes up and down at that speed, and then plug it's... that into the filter, and then it's wowing on its own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be able to make a patch, you would call it. Something that sounds musical and hopefully pretty from this. And my goal just above that is to also understand it. Like maybe if we build something from scratch, yeah. that we can understand what it's doing and just start with the absolute basics. There are some great ways to do this stuff without even buying the modules. There's free yeah, software. Yeah. And so if you want to give it a try without software. like spending a ton of money. How much is a module? Some of them would be like, 
a hundred dollars. Some of them will be like five hundred. Some mm -hmm. will be over a thousand. Mm. I'm super lucky. I do a lot of videos about these that so are viewed by a lot free. of people. <laughs> so probably about half this system I did not pay for. Uh -huh. This is a new car. Oh yeah. This this actually is more expensive than the car I drive. I should point out is this is an insane synth, and this is a big passion of mine. And you know, of course, very fortunate to have this. But you can do a lot with a much smaller setup. Okay, so absolute basics. Plug in an oscillator. An oscillator is just the thing that makes tones. This is just a really nice quality analog VCO, which stands for voltage controlled oscillator. Because it's analog, there's a physical thing that's vibrating in there. Yeah. I don't actually know exactly how that works. Yeah. 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 I, I don't really <laughs> know how oscillators it work either. so many times and there's something electronic that's vibrating there. That's just your output. So that's just yeah, yeah, yeah. So get, plugging connecting it into, into the a mixer that goes to the speaker in our audio mm -hmm. recorder. Everything feeds into that. Yeah. This is the oscillator, right? And we've got a choice between a few different types of waveforms. Some of them turn the pitch up. Oh, I guess you could just play this. <laughs> hey, I'm getting a song. Oh, all right. It's like a theremin. If you can get yeah. really good at turning knobs, yeah. you, can, you can play just this one. So far, I understand this. This is making a tone. You can change its pitch. Is there like yeah. a mute button? We think of instruments as like, you press a button and a sound happens. Or yeah. you just pluck a string and a sound happens. With electronic music, sort of have that idea as well because you think of a synthesizer yeah. with a keyboard attached and you're like, when I press a note, you get a sound. But actually what's happening is the oscillators are constantly going yeah. and the keys let the sound through. Uh -huh. In the same way, instead of plugging this directly to our speaker, I would plug it first into what's called a, a voltage controlled amplifier yeah. or a VCA. And then I'm gonna take the output of the VCA to the speaker. Oh. And now the voltage controlled amplifier has a volume control for mm -hmm. that tone we were sending it. But there's also control voltage control over that volume control. So what I'm gonna do is okay. send one of these slow waves to control <laughs> the volume, right? Basically, this is another oscillator you're controlling invisible hands yeah. that are like on that knob going like this yeah. now. So right now it's like, you can picture like a saw wave turning to the max volume and then drifting down, but we can make it more like wavy where it like fades in and out. Mm -hmm. And that's the CV. Yeah, that's the CV controlling the volume of that tone. And just as a, a fun example, if I took this same signal to control the pitch at the same time, <laughs> right? and then okay. I control the amount of that pitch change, right? Dialing in the size of that mm -hmm. control voltage wave. And if I zero it out, then we don't hear that effect at all. Okay, so right now, this guy is set up to just do this. Yeah. In CV. Yeah. And now basically those invisible hands are being applied through these two patches that are split to both the pitch yep. of the oscillator as well as the volume of the oscillator. So okay. it's really like you're building music from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. Like from just a sound, you have to you sculpt into it. <laughs> so if I unplug this, yeah. then we get nothing. Yeah, because it's controlling the volume and the pitch. Changing the knobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our invisible hands going yeah. This module looks really crazy, but it's simple. <laughs> it just makes a pitch. Modular ends up looking complicated because it gives you access to mm -hmm. almost every possible parameter where maybe a lot of times there's something you're never going to use or very rarely going to use. And yeah. like most patches I make, I'm not using every single module. Of definitely not using every single input on every single module. But one thing we could do that would just immediately sound much nicer. If I just like hit play on this sequencer. Uh -huh. What is a sequencer? The easiest way to explain a sequencer is just that it makes events happen in mm -hmm. time. This is a 16 step sequencer. This is a module and this is a separate module, but they mm -hmm. interface. This one, the speed of it is controlling both of them. You can tell by the lights always yeah. being in sync. What I'm gonna do is plug one of these sequencer outputs to mm -hmm. what's called the volt per octave input. And that just means that it tracks according to musical scales that we tend to use. So oh, like one volt okay. it changes it exactly by an octave. And yeah. from that, you can determine like a 12th of an octave is a semitone, mm. that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Oh, is this a sequence right here in the... In the da -da 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 -da. Yeah, so this is going across here and each of these outputs is playing a different sequence, which you can control by these knobs. This will give us a sequence that roughly should be going up. Mm -hmm. Let's turn up the volume. 
Oh, look at that. What do, what do these do then? So I understand so, this is the sequence and it's yeah. going through them. So on each step, like let's say I just hold one step. I can choose what note I want coming out of this eighth output. Whoa. So let's figure out what scale we're in. This sounds like it's good job. pretty much major. Majors, yeah. That's I think is our tonic. So let's say we start on our tonic, second note, uh, fifth. Next one is octave up. Mm -hmm. We could do something like that again. And then I'm just gonna quickly fill in like random other scale notes yeah. for the rest to just make this faster. <laughs> now when I let go, it plays. <laughs> it's super like video gamey. Yeah. Cause this is just controlling a change to this pitch. Yeah. So if I go back to the original pitch, I can move all of it like yeah, down. Yeah, you're transposing the whole thing. Oh. Here's something fun about this sequencer. So let's just take one of these outputs. I'll take the very first one. We just have something that's constantly playing, yeah. right? Every time the sequencer moves to mm -hmm. the next pitch, which is at an even tempo, uh -huh. it's changing and it's just constantly going. And so to be more musical rather than just being like, that there's always da -da 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 notes going. I'm gonna go back to this maths module. Mm -hmm. And this one is the invisible hands. Yeah. So this is a CV signal. Yeah. But what I'm gonna do is trigger those um, CV signals to happen mm -hmm. only on certain beats. So I'm gonna slide okay. all these to zero. Okay, explain to me this. <laughs> right, Yeah. so each of these sliders uh -huh. sets the probability that on that step of the sequence, <laughs> it will actually Oh, fire. we're getting really com right? complicated. So if they're all to the left, nothing happens. So now we're using like random sequences. Yeah. Like, okay, so, let's so say, this let's sequence, is this sequence synced with that? Yeah. Yeah, it is, okay. So what I'm gonna and do then, is slide one all the way to the right. And that's sliding maybe, the probability to that be 100%, 100%. you're gonna get a note that time. So let's do maybe just like okay. every quarter note, this would be, Okay. It's every four. So I'm gonna trigger this invisible hands. So every time in that sequence, this is going to trigger this, yeah. which is going to... You're hearing some notes sneak in yeah. after the triggers, right? The envelope doesn't close uh -huh. fast enough, so the next note is sneaking through mm -hmm. while it's still turning down the volume. Yeah. If I make this short enough, we yeah. just get the sequence, right? Uh -huh. Every quarter note, we get whatever note happens to be coming out there. Okay, so this is the sequencer, and you have it set to where every quarter note in yeah. this sequence, you go to here, yeah. that gives you an envelope, which is then going towards the volume, yep. and this sequencer is changing the notes yeah. to be in a musical way, but it's only getting through because every quarter note, this is this triggering is it in. Here at All right, volume. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. So a fun thing to do is introduce a little probability where let's say I turn some of these down to half. Uh huh. You always hear that one that's a hundred, and every once in a while some of the other ones come through. Yeah. And if we just like I love to do this, just randomly slide a few of the others to be lower. <laughs> <laughs> now you get a sequence that's like there's noticeable parts to it that are gonna be similar. But I guess as long as you have that, maybe if we have every fourth, then we at yeah, least true. have a constant because we know that there's a 100% probability of the quarter notes. Yeah. Wow, I see how this can get like... <laughs> okay, so if I wanted to do every eighth note, I would bring the probability of all of these every up. Every one, yeah. And then... Just make sure that one's fully 100, yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And then if I bring this up, the fall knob. Yeah, that's the decay of the envelope, so how long it takes to turn the volume back down. Mm -hmm. And then I can move the key, the key of everything. That is satisfying. The butterfly effect starts here, kind of. Can we put some, okay, I understand this. Yeah. Can we put some reverb on it? Yes, we can. Yeah. How will we do that though, since it goes, will we so, bring it to a reverb and then to the mixer? I would take it, like I put the reverb right at the end because you yeah, have the course, volume controlling the sound and you want the reverb to not be like coming in and out. And I could see how if you had it closer in the chain, you could do some crazy stuff with reverb. Oh yeah. Do you want to send it to the spring reverb? Yeah, yeah. let's send it to the let's spring reverb. Okay. okay, so we're gonna send the whole we're thing to the spring. Send everything to the spring and then okay. we're going from the spring now to our mixer. Whoa! There we go. So that's with the reverb fully wet. This is the physical. Oh! Yeah, you're muting all the, the 
the vibrations, right? Spring reverb works where you send the audio into the spring yeah. and then the spring reverberates and then there's another pickup on it that then takes it and you hear the reverberations. That's how spring reverbs work. Yeah. And so if I actually press it, it stops or you can play it. Yeah, you can hear the noise of the springs. <laughs> metal. Yeah, so heavy. Literal metal. Um, yeah, literal. Ah. Or all the way dry. Yeah, that's, that's the, the original That's signal. the original signal. This isn't doing anything. And then dry and wet is the more of the spring we hear. Yep. Oh, cool. Add the feedback. Ooh. Let's do it like real, real wet reverb. Okay, I understand this. I understand what's going on. I could definitely see how it, this is kind of like a, a relaxing, like yeah, a very meditative, exactly. you could spend just hours and you're creating a patch. <laughs> you love that pitch knob, huh? Yeah. Well, I think for me, like anything that I can like perform. Would you want to connect something so that you can change the pitch of everything, but have it all stay in key? You can add these these invisible hands yeah. to what notes you're playing too. That's exactly and since it. You, and you could also make it random to where it's gonna be random notes in that yeah, key. Yeah, yeah. Put this through another VCA. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, you're hearing just the springs going, and it's just gonna be like clicks, I think, if I go fully dry. Yeah, because oh, I, pulled, yeah. I pulled the pitch out. Oh, yeah, well, okay, so I can go to quarter though. notes. Yeah. Da, 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 okay. Yeah. But yeah, so if I'm, I'm gonna take this pitch sequence through this voltage controlled amplifier and mm -hmm. then take that signal into what is uh, called a quantizer and I'll just yep. set this to a major scale. What is a quantizer? So a quantizer takes any voltage and kind of rounds it to the nearest pitch of whatever you set. So mm -hmm. whatever comes into here, I'm forcing it to go to a major scale. But basically gives you like a step ladder almost. No matter yeah, what so you're CD you feed it, it snaps to okay. the key. Okay. So now when I plug this back into the pitch, we have our same sequence going to the VCA, right? Yeah. So it's got the same shape to it, but everything stays in key, but if you turn it higher, you get a melody yeah. with a bigger range. Oh, okay, okay. And if we go all the way up. Oh, now the range is great, wow. Yeah. Just this knob is controlling the, the range of notes that yeah. you will hit. Yeah. So you can see the notes that this is rounding everything to right here, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, I see here. This is the major scale. Yeah, it's like a keyboard. And, yeah, it's a keyboard. <laughs> and you could choose, like, to add that note into it, or can we get a little bit of reverb on it? Yeah. You know what okay, I'm yeah, I see. I see where you like this. That's pretty. Yeah. And and if I change this again, I, that's still the beginning of the... Yeah, and it changes the whole key of everything. Oh. Could you give me a major seventh? It's major octave? seventh chord? Yeah, major One, seventh three, chord. Five, seven. That's, that's pretty. Okay, and then if I turn all these off, this is our sequencer, and now, we, now we're now we gonna get nothing. Yeah. Well, except we for the, the feedback, we get the feedback the... from the spring. Let's get a sequence in that sounds as pretty as possible. Just a wash of pretty sound. So, so we can just that's the speed turn of it. the tempo right down. Let's bring it all the way up. What does it sound all the way up? <laughs> <laughs> and just turn on all these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's so much easier to just make noise. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. This is kind of the classic modular, like, yeah. leap and bloop thing that tends to happen because uh, it's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> I'm gonna take some more invisible hands here. This is just like creating a really slow wave, just like so up all this is, and down. All this right yeah. here is just I'm gonna invisible apply hands. that to... Oh, the one I was using earlier. Yeah, so we get this repeated rhythm. Uh-huh. We know we're always in the key, but this is making us go like a smaller melody range, larger mm -hmm. melody range, yeah. and kind of like changing that up for us. But I might change maybe the attack of the notes. Yeah. Like that kind of sounds like a flute. So maybe yeah, we take. Yeah, sounds not actually. Nice so it's less bloopy because it yeah. builds up into the note. Yeah. Okay. So and again, this is controlling the sequencer. I think it sounds nice if we modulate that, where it's like some shorter notes. 
some longer notes. Yeah. So what I would do uh -huh. is, is I would take this invisible hand up yeah, and down thing one. through a VCA mm -hmm. to be able to control the amount that it's controlling okay. the attack. So we're gonna plug the output of that to the rise. And that's, again, just like something moving that. So now if I move that, it's already being moved. It's already being moved, but yeah. you're sort of setting like the central point and it'll yeah. move it back uh -huh. and forth from there. Ooh. You know what I think would be really nice yeah, with this? Yeah, Rhythmic yeah. delay, so uh -huh. that we don't have just one note at a time, but some of them are gonna harmonize with yes. each other. <laughs> so you have like delay modules. Yeah, I'm gonna use this dual looping delay. Okay. I'm gonna put the whole thing through the reverb after mm -hmm. the delay. So now we've taken out the very last signal to yeah. the speaker. This will go to the delay first. Mm -hmm. And this is the and delay module. And then we will go to the reverb again. We'll so now what I'm gonna yeah. do <laughs> is take another cable. Let's set channel eight to be at 100% of everything. So this is another channel on the sequencer where oh, we're gonna so this be- this sequencer can have eight different sequences going at once. Yeah, this one I've set to a different speed even. So you can have like mm. it going a quarter of the speed of the main sequence or whatever. So now, yeah, I'm changing it back so it's changing on yeah. every single note. That's I've something that's kind of confusing about here. these. What you see here is one of these. Exactly. And you can set them, so it's like these are in different spots for every one. And that's yeah. you reset. This is me getting one sequence so that it's always firing at 100. Mm -hmm. Actually, and you can tell even clearer because of these special cables yeah, that it has a... light up. So what I'm oh, doing that's cool. is I'm setting this to ping the delay. What that basically mm -hmm. means is it's gonna be in the same tempo as our sequence. Half dry, half wet on the delay. Mm -hmm. We can change from different speeds of delays. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're always gonna yeah. be in time. That sounds like it's a 16th note delay. Mm -hmm. You can modulate the amount of feedback on the delay if you wanted. Have it really layer up mm -hmm. and then come back down to not much. That's nice. Is there a way we could get like a chord underneath that? See, that's the other thing with modular is you probably would want a specific chord generating module. Mm -hmm. Without a chord generating module, mm -hmm. the amount of notes you want in your chord, that's how many oscillators yeah. you need, and then you have to tune them all. Oh. <laughs> if I wanted to do a chord, I would just bust out a regular scene. Yeah, of course, and yeah. The interesting thing too about modular is like, the only thing you really need to wrap your head around is the waves. This. Each module does something different to those waves. Maybe uh -huh. it makes waves, maybe it turns down and up mm -hmm. waves, maybe it makes really fast waves, really slow waves. That's all of yeah. music, is just mm -hmm. a wave hitting our ears. Yeah. There's tons and tons to learn about individual modules, but at the end of the day, it's also like, this sequencer, mm -hmm. that's just generating a wave that's like on, off, on, off, on, off, on, yeah. off, on, off. Uh -huh. The pitch sequence is just like a wave that's like, here for this note, here for this note, here for the really high mm. note. This one has probability. There's no other instrument I think that I have that has like a probability. I guess in your playing, like yeah, if, you, you, if you go for a fast decide. solo, there's a probability you're not gonna hit the high C or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's keep going with this and just try to make sure. the prettiest possible patch we can. It's already like the reverb adds a lot. It really does. Yeah. Maybe we want to get like a bass note under it to just like yeah. drone and anchor it. How let's, would we do let's that? Let's first pull out uh, an oscillator to give us a low note. What is WTF oscillator? <laughs> it has two different waves which are in the red and blue, but the yeah. white is the wave that's actually getting through and that is like a window between yeah. the waves. Ooh. I would, Ooh, can yeah, I you just tune it to the drone note you want. Oh, that's nice. We got like a minor thing going on. That's pretty. Yeah. Tuning by dials is definitely new for me. You know, we could be modulating these yeah. tonal parameters while it's going. Oh, that's interesting how I... So I'm gonna filter it so that we can kind of mellow it out if we want to. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> I also like this one, whatever this does. Oh, that's another sequencer. How can we turn this down in the mix? Oh, on the mixer. Uh, I have it plugged into this 
part of the mixer, so. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this one's like a pretty harsh yeah, oscillator. Yeah, this one. If we could get it to oscillate between like this note and like a fifth and then. So how would we do that? We would just set up a much slower sequence. And I could see like if we had like a mix oscillation where like one thing comes in, like the higher part comes in, the bass comes in. Right, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. We could totally do so that. So it's not as static, like it's moving, then it would be Should more. Should this drone also go to the reverb and delay? So Maybe then... a different reverb. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah we'll do, do a different, different reverb. reverb. Smart. Can you turn off this so we could just hear the bass and hear what we're doing with that? Let's go to this reverb. I mean, we won't hear too much of what the reverb is doing until we of change Of course, notes. yeah, and it's just one note. If we get a slow wave. Yeah, bring, yeah. Bringing that in and out. So let's bring one of these invisible hands. Yep. Let's make it really slow. I think this is about the slowest it can go. Hmm, that's, that's pretty. Ooh. Yeah. I'm gonna set up a sequence here. The length is only gonna be two because we're only gonna switch between two notes. I need another sequencer that's gonna choose those two notes. Two-step sequence. Yeah, that's a fifth, okay. So now I can clock this at a totally different rate. Would it be possible to get to roll between the two or no? The very specific note sequencing yeah. is not something I do a lot of because yeah. my whole oh, okay. traction to modular is like making things where I just kind of set the guidelines. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to play a very specific bass line, uh -huh. I'd you would just like play the note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's not, this is not the fastest yeah. way to do so it. So I'm not really looking at this. I'm just so used to. Well, and if you wanted to approach it the way that you're talking about, you'd probably have a slightly different selection of modules and you could yeah, do it Yeah, you probably way. just have, if but, I wanted a bass line, then you yeah. would just have one of these attached to it. And we can still get like part of the way there. We had the two notes that we wanted. They're going through that reverb. If we once yeah. again have this like fading thing. That's a, just a different way of thinking of an instrument. It's like you just set the rules and then yeah. just let it go. I feel like it's giving us more notes than I asked it yeah, to. Yeah, we just want two. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had yeah. to delete all the extra steps in that sequence. So now it is just okay. back and forth. And can we make that really slow? We can slow that down. Let's go back to probability. We can set all of these at like 50, let's say, so that there's a 50% chance on every 16th note that it'll trigger the note change. Mm -hmm. Maybe that even is too fast. We can find out. Can we bring, bring in the higher part too now? <laughs> Trying to look at this like a regular instrument. Right, yeah. Is just... It's such a different approach to yeah, any other kind of totally. music. That's, that's the interesting thing about it. Mm -hmm. Is this like trying to play it and play chords and stuff is just not what this is about. Unless you really want it to be, but it's probably not the yeah. most effective approach yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really excels at sound design and at this kind mm -hmm. of generative stuff where you're like, mm -hmm. here are the parameters that I want the invisible hands to play within. Uh -huh. Making beats where fills are generated automatically. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff is really fun. I should probably send you like different clips of other patches I've done yeah. just so you can get uh -huh. a wide variety of totally. different kinds of sounds you want to get mm -hmm. out of this. What would you do at this point, actually? I think this is a nice vibe. Maybe yeah. like we could just get like a drum underneath it. Okay. I don't really like the bass line not being in tune. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the other note? We'll find out soon. Yeah. Right. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, I like this. This is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like we have the notes there. Maybe add more modulation. Maybe like we don't have spacier. the delay constantly going. We can have it be like intermittent. Mm -hmm. We get a dry version of the audio. Go into another channel and then we'll turn the delay fully wet. Mm -hmm. And so that we're we splitting will, the dry and the wet signal yeah, into two different. But I'm also gonna put the split signal that's going to the delay through another VCA mm -hmm. so that we can have another invisible hand mm -hmm. like sending it to the delay and then taking it mm -hmm. away. Looking at it all at once, it seems really confusing, but it is kind of all the same concept. Right, right? yeah, yeah. There's so much randomness here. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things with modular is like you have all these control possibilities, but the fun is letting the machine make some of the decisions for mm -hmm. you. Now I need to just pick some other 
semi-random thing that will decide how often we send a note to the reverb. Wait, let's just hear the reverb. Ooh, cool. Okay. So there's like different parameters we could dial in for this reverb. And it's fully mm -hmm. wet because it's gonna be mixed with the original mm -hmm. signal. Oh, I kind of like that. Yeah. It's very ghostly. So now, yeah. I'm gonna turn down the volume of that because we're gonna get something else to decide how often a note goes out there. Mm -hmm. Some other random signal, maybe the final invisible hand from this. Yeah. And instead of making it super regular, we could have another random signal control the speed of that wave. I love when reverb has a like, it's like called sway maybe, like the reverb gets lower in pitch as it goes away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool and I'm hearing that in there. I'm gonna turn everything else back on and we'll yeah. hear that reverb occasionally coming in. I can really see how you could just spend hours and hours doing this, of course. Yeah. It's the enjoyment of exploring and discovering um, more so than just like, I want to finish a track, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, will this change the tempo of the sequence? Yeah, yeah. Use this to play different noises. Yeah, but what what type of noises? Because just like a drum. Up. Give me a snare. Turn off everything except for oh, yeah. what you're working on. How do it's, I do that? Uh, oh, all these. On there. Oh, that one. Oh. How do we make a snare drum with this? Do you want to make a snare drum from scratch? If you think about a snare, it's like pretty noisy, right? Uh huh. So let's listen to some white noise. So this so, just generates noise. Different flavors of noise. Uh, this one at the bottom is really crackly. Mm. But yeah, if we just get white noise white and then noise. put an envelope on it. Exactly. And then we can get like a So again, got to put it through a VCA. Here. Volume control for the white mm -hmm. noise. We could use these maybe. I should be able to just Yeah. Oh, all right. Use that button as a trigger. And then again, I've got the envelope decay. Might want to layer something more tonal, like a pitch that drops. Yeah. Uh, if you think about hitting a drum, boom. So we would have this also trigger something else that's a tone that goes new. Yeah. We could just trigger a specifically built drum module. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's your decay sound. Change the pitch of it. Make it really short and snappy. Yeah. And if we mix it in with the our white other noise, white noise. Yeah. Kind of sounds like a drum. Fine tune that. Ooh, in a synthesizer that had a drum machine, like an old school one, it essentially had this behind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this just allows you to take every single part of it apart and put it back together again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you can really craft exactly you know, what you would want. And it's not for everybody. Some people would rather just download a snare sample yeah. <laughs> and go. Uh -huh. Let's get the same patch, but here and just change the parameters. Can we do that to get a kick drum? That would be complicated to make the mm -hmm. same thing into a kick drum, but we, we could, could just use a different module. Use a different module. <laughs> I have a kick module, number two kick module. So try triggering that kick drum. All right. Ooh, I love in songs. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Now let's bring the sequencer into here and get a kick snare pattern. This is not what I would use for that. I would just no. move these to the sequencer. We already have this going, so if we... <laughs> Maybe I'll take this. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, let's get a blast beat in there. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and because of the randomness, you can add, like, yeah. variation. I'm gonna zero out the snare. Yeah, so the snare. You could do, like, snare on two and four to start. Yeah. And now we're on the kick I, I just selected the kick channel, yeah. So I can move these and they're so, not gonna yeah, affect the snare. Any of these are gonna just affect okay. the kick. Okay. Let's just get on the one. And I want this to come in half the time. Yeah. This is always a fun thing. Like you yeah. work on something and you like mess a bunch of things up and then you bring back the other, like our uh -huh. melody and bass yeah. that we were doing before and you're like, how's this gonna go? Yeah, now? who knows? <laughs> yep. Ooh, wait. 
And this tempo is everything in the sequencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cool. Oh, yeah. Like, chiller. Yeah. Ooh, okay, so the reverb that I had on earlier, we get uh, another oscillator, eh, to turn that on and off. You like. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, but there's gotta be, I mean, you can always just go on, off, on, off. Yeah, let's this do that. One. All right, so I'm just connecting that to the two. Oh. There you go. Ooh. That's, That's so cool. cool. Keep going. I guess I keep double tapping, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, because you're doing one on, one off. <laughs> yes. to get it back. And it's cool because this signal path that I'm turning on is so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Bass is right here. Yeah. What if I start messing with the waves? Oh yeah. Oh, you know what would be fun? Why, why am I doing this? Let's get some invisible yeah, yeah, hands yeah. to do it. I can like change with one of these sequences yeah. so it's like jumping between yeah. the different. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Turn the bass up. Maybe lose the high notes for now. Let's just open the bass. And that's just this module being messed around with other stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Ooh, that's cool. All right. This slider, yeah. if you move around, controls Ooh. Controls that modulation. And it's also recording everything you do into the sequence. So as soon as you stop touching it, it'll keep looping. Oh, really? 16, 16th notes. Last bar. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just mess around with this. Oh. That's fun. Whoa, that's awesome. You know what? Dude. Really? We're only playing two notes on here. Do we want to change this so that it's playing like a ton of different notes? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I just got it playing a random note sequence here. Yeah. Can I get the reverb on this back? Just the reverb? Yeah, yeah, what channel are we going to? I'm gonna change this pitch sequence. Yes, yeah. yeah. Once a bit lower. Can we turn these notes into just craziness? Like co totally random notes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe each one could have a pitch envelope too. Yeah. Let me try that. On every 16th. Yeah. And dial it in. <laughs> Whoa! Thank <laughs> you. 
I want to make it better. Yeah, cool. Actually, this one's kind of fun. That cuts better. Yeah, and you can use the mixer to turn things off and on. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Rob Scalley. <Yeah. laughs> I love that. Uh, I'm sure just turn stuff on. Bringing the reverb back on that. Yeah. Just making the bass sound kind of weird. Where does this go? Oh, this is what we were using to control the tempo before. Oh yeah, we don't want to do that. I can call it. Whoa! What? Everything we're playing is Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. This is weird. Yeah. Like, video game techno. Yeah. <laughs> is the most powerful thing is what I'm learning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like build up a song <laughs> yeah. Playing this feels completely different yeah. than playing an instrument. I think yeah. getting into it too, like to start, I was trying to play it like a keyboard. Like, okay, how do we get things to where I can perform them? But that's not yeah. what this is about. Deciding how you want to approach modular is a big mm -hmm. part of it. Having like an end goal in mind, whether it's like, I want to be able to just like generate beats randomly, or I want to create beautiful ambient music yeah. where I just like set the scale. Like it's all a possibility. Let's just start turning knobs and see what happens. Oh, let's do it.
This is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got the last of it. Well, if yeah, you okay. uh, are at all interested in modular synths or music or content, you should subscribe to Andrew Lots Huang. Lots of that where I'm yeah. coming from. Yeah. You can subscribe to my channel if you would like. I'm sure this isn't the last interesting instrument we look at on this channel. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe to Andrew, and we'll see you next week. Woo! Or sometime soon.